On this case file from the puzzle detective, a clever use of words crossed with a game of bingo. If you're feeling up to the challenge, download the PDF file from the description and then get ready to meet me at the puzzle board. Thanks to PennyDellPuzzles.com for permission to use their puzzles on the Puzzle Detective. Find the link to the free PDF file for this puzzle as well as the link to PennyDellPuzzles.com in the description of this video and learn more about a special offer at the end of this episode. The puzzle for this episode is quite simply called Bingo. And this is not a number puzzle, obviously. We're going to be working with words and letters and filling this grid in. It is a five by five grid. Anyway, the first thing, that is, as we always do, is to jump right in and go through uh, the limited instructions that we have here for bingo. Place the 25 words, we have 25 words down below here, into the bingo card squares so that the five words in every row and as we know, rows go horizontally, every column go vertically, and both di major diagonals, those are the five square diagonals, all have at least one letter in common. In the example below, in this little diagram here, uh, all three words in the bottom row have an H. We've got char, what, and kith, they all have H. All three words in the middle column have an A, sang, back, and what, and uh, also the uh, diagonals all have a K, as you can see the letters here. We've got all T's, A's, R's in each one of those words, and so forth. So that's what we want to do. That's just simply the example. We want to uh, duplicate that over here on our 5x5 five five grid with all of the words that we have here. Now, trial and error is certainly a choice, but you could be working a puzzle for weeks doing it by trial and error. There is, in fact, a very logical way to go about doing that, and that's my job as the puzzle detective is to try to put some logic to the puzzles. So how would you go about uh, analyzing this? This is one puzzle. The bingo puzzle is one that does require a fair bit of analysis before you get going um, to help with trying to figure out some logic. Now, as we know, each one of these rows, columns, and diagonals has to have a common letter. If we look at all of these words down here, we're going to have to find at least five words that have a letter in common for it to work from top to bottom, or from side to side, or on the diagonal. If we don't have that letter showing up in at least five of these words, we're not going to be able to fulfill one of the rows, columns, or diagonals. So the first thing that we need to do, or the first thing that we should do, is do a count on how many times each letter of the alphabet appears in our uh, list of words. That sounds like a lot of work, doesn't it? Well, it is. And that's part of the fun of figuring out these puzzles. If it was easy, there wouldn't be any fun involved. But let's do this. As you can see, as I step back here, I've got the letters kind of written out already, but I don't have the letters Q or Z, because Q and Z don't show up in any of these words. I don't know why. Maybe somebody doesn't like Q or Z. But anyway, uh, uh, I've seen other bingo puzzles where they do lose, use those letters, so it's not like discrimination against a couple letters of the alphabet. Anyway, in this particular puzzle, we don't have Q or Z, but we have the other 24 letters of the alphabet represented. And yes, this is the point where I have to count each time that the letter shows up starting with the letter A. We're going to start at the front of the alphabet. How many times does the letter A show up? We've got once, twice, three times, four times, five times. Five times the letter A shows up. Let's put five here, which means A is a likely candidate to be one of the letters that we're going to have to fill in for one of the rows, columns, or diagonals. Let's try the letter B. Yes, we have to do this for each one of the letters of the alphabet. One, two, three, four, five. Once again, B shows up five times. And now you can either fast forward or we'll move things along for you just a little bit here.
y. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times y shows up. And we have now counted all of the letters. And how do we know that we've got all the letters? If you add up all of these numbers, they add up to 100. We've got 25 words, four letters each, easy math, that's also 100. Again, we've established that uh, each row, column, and diagonal is going to have to have at least five words with a letter in common. If we step back here and take a look at these letters, let's count how many letters have at least five appearances in our list of words. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve words with at least five appearances in our word list. And how many rows? We've got five rows, five columns, two diagonals, twelve. So we've got twelve instances where we need at least five letters, and we've got twelve letters that meet that criteria. Isn't that convenient? Well, that's the way it's supposed to work out, and as you see now, we know which 12 letters are going to go on these arrows, but we just don't know where they go yet. Uh, one of the things that they've done here in the puzzle is to also give us a couple words uh, that it, to help us start off. We've got grab and mild. They've already been checked off down here on the list. Those are also going to be hints as we move along. Well, now we have all of this information, but what can we do with it? Take another look at the puzzle. Let's take a look at this box right here in the upper corner. How many times is that box going to come into play? It's going to come into play once vertically, once horizontally, and once diagonally. That means that whatever word we decide to put in that box, it's going to have to have at least three letters from this list over here of letters that have more than uh, five appearances on the list. In this box here, we only have to worry about the vertical and horizontal. We don't have to worry about either of the diagonals. We only need a word that has two letters of our common 12 letters uh, that are going to be in that box as well. Which box on this grid is going to be the one where it has the most commonly shared letters? Well, of course, it's the middle box. The middle box, it's going to have a, a horizontal it's going to have a vertical, and it's also going to have both diagonals. That means whatever word goes in this center box, it's going to have to have four letters that have more than five appearances on our word list. So what can we do down here to try to help identify that? Just like we did with counting the letters on our word list, we now have to take each one of these words and figure out how many times the letters in these words are one of, the 12, one of the 12 letters that show up at least five times. What do I mean by that? Let's take a look at the word blow. B shows up five times. L shows up seven times. O shows up seven times. But W only shows up four times. That means it's got three letters in the word blow that show up that are one of our uh, <coughs> letters that's showing up at least five times in each of the words. We have to do this with each one of these words now. Let's try bump. B is five, U is six, M is five, P is only two. Once again, bump. Three of the letters that show up 12 times. Let's do this. Let's circle each one of these that shows up at least five times to make it a little bit easier visually to see what I'm talking about. All right, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Uh, and again, if we look at the word bump, we've got U, M, and B three of those circled letters appear in this word. And now we've got to do this for each one of our words. Once again, we'll move things along for you. We 
We have now counted up how many times each one of these letters are one of the letters that occur at least 12 times on our word list. As we look at all of these words, <clears throat> we've already decided that this center square here is going to have to be a word with four appearances. We're going to have to account for vertical, horizontal, and both of the diagonals. We have two words from our list that meet that criteria. We have the word many. We also have the word mild. But mild has already appeared down in this bottom corner. Remember I said that these words that are already placed on the grid are also going to be hints as we go along. Well, many is the only word then that can go in this center square Now we can also put a check down here by many, since we've used it, and we have our first word placed. Well, what other information can we gather as since we have placed uh, uh, the first word on our grid? Clearly, this is going to have to be one of these four letters. It's going to have to be in common going down, also going across, and also on the diagonals. Let's take a look at the other word here next to many, it's the word grab, do we have any commonly shared letters? Well, obviously the answer is yes we do. The commonly shared letter is A. We've got A and A. That means on this horizontal, as we look back up here, A is one of our letters that uh, occurs five or more times. We know that this horizontal is going to have to be A. It's the only thing that it can be. Knowing that, we have uh, um, three other words with the letter A in it, but we don't know which one's which. So we'll have to do more, look for more clues to figure out which ones go in there. As we look at this diagonal, we want to see if there are any commonly shared uh, letters between this word and the one down in the corner. Once again, yes there is, the letter M. We know that this diagonal then is going to have to be the letter M and as we look back over here, M is also one of our circled letters, so we know that we're on the right path there as well. Sometimes when you have that many words and that many spaces on the grids, it can be overwhelming. But we know that there are only three words on our list that are going to fulfill these last three boxes. And as I like to do, it's quite all right if you make notes to yourself on the grid that you can then go back later on and erase. Let's put the other possible words for A in this box here. We've already used grab. There's jade. We've got, we've already used the word many. We've got raft. And we've got tack. Those are the three remaining words that use the letter A that we have not already used. We can duplicate that little list over here. Jade, raft, tack. And one more time, jade, raft, We want to do the same thing with the diagonal and the other remaining M words. There are only five words over here that use the letter M. We've already used many and mild. Which other words can we use? Bump, we've used grab, we've used many and mild, we've got mist. And we've got worm. Once again, we want to duplicate that little mini list in each of the diagonals here. Bump. Mist. Worm. Bump. Mist. Worm. All right. Now that we've placed these words on the grid, what can we deduce from the, the, the position of the words? Let's start up in this upper left-hand corner and look at the word bump. 
because what we can decide right now is that somewhere we're going to have to have a commonly shared letter. We've already used A and we've already used M, but there's going to have to be another commonly shared letter between each word here and one of the words from this list here. So the first letter in bump, B, does bump show up in any of these words down here? It does not. Does U show up? It does not. We've already eliminated M. We can skip over that. Is there any P in any of these words here? There is not. So we know that bump can be eliminated from that upper square. Let's continue uh, analyzing the words from this square with this list down here. We've already used M from mist. Is there an I down here anywhere? There is not. We can't uh, use uh, the I. Is there an S down here anywhere? There is not. Is there a T down here? There is, in fact, in the word raft. Well, T is a possibility, and we can put that up there for the time being, and that means that mist could possibly go up there. Mist certainly shows up three times, and it's going to have to have three letters that are shared, so it's all right in that square. Uh, also, worm has three commonly shared letters, but let's check the letters in worm against this list down here. There are no W's down here. There are no O's. We've already used the M there. Is there an R? There is in raft. So this column is going to have to be either T or R. Uh, once again, the T shows up in raft. The R shows up also in raft. The T and the R does not show up in the word jade. We can eliminate jade from that square, leaving us only two possibilities. We can do the same thing now with this column. Let's check each of the letters here in the words and make sure that we have at least one commonly shared letter from this list with the word grab. There is a B bump. We do have a B in grab. How about mist? M, there's no M, there's no I, there's no S, and there is no T. We can eliminate mist from that square right there. What about worm? Well, we have a R in uh, both worm and grab. This is going to have to be either bump or worm. And we can also deduce that in this vertical here, the, this is going to have to be either B or R. Those are the only commonly shared letters between these words and grab. Let's move down to the end column here and check these words against the word that we were given uh, when the puzzle started, mild. Can we find a common letter between jade and mild? Yes, there's a D. How about raft? There's no R, A, F, or T. Raft can be eliminated from that box. How about tack? T, A, C, or K. There's no commonly shared letters there, meaning that this has to be jade. Let's put it in big bold letters and eliminate it from our list. We can also now eliminate jade from that box. And as we look up and down, the only shared letters between jade and mild is the letter D. We know that the, all of the other words in that column are going to also have to have the letter D. And as we look back here, D is one of our letters that shows up at least five times on our list. And just like we did before with adding these little mini lists, we can now put the remaining three words that use the letter D into these boxes. We have not used ding. D-I-N-G. We have not used duck. And we've used jade. We've used mild. Pods is the last, the last word that uses the letter D. Let's finish this little mini list in each one of these boxes. As I look at each of these words, ding does have three letters that are shared, so that can stay. Duck only has two, and what did we say about this box? It's going to have each word in this box 
any word in this box is going to have to have three shared letters. Duck only has two shared letters, so we can eliminate that from that box. How about pods? Pods also only has two commonly shared letters. We can eliminate pods, giving us the answer ding up in this upper corner. We can now eliminate ding from these two boxes. Let's take a look at this diagonal now. Does an M show up here? It does not. Does an A show up here? It does not. There is an N, but there's no Y. We now know that this diagonal, N, is going to have to be the answer for that particular diagonal. And what do you think we do next? Yes, you're right. We put our mini list on the rest of the remaining words on that diagonal. But before we do that, let's check off the word ding down here so we don't try to reuse it. What are our remaining N words? Knob. Lent. We've used many. Runs. And the last N word is town. And we can continue these little mini lists here. And those are our remaining words that use the letter N. We know that those are going to have to be used to complete the list. I know what you're probably asking yourself at this point. Spending so much time on a puzzle, where do I find time to do my laundry? It's funny you should ask because just the other day I was doing my laundry and I was considering putting my clothes through a second wash cycle, but I could see they were already getting agitated. Let's get back to our puzzle now. We can look down this row here. We know that the word down here is going to have to contain it a B or an R. Knob does contain a B. Lent does not contain a B or an R. We can eliminate that. Runs qualifies. Town, how about town? Town will not work. We know that this box is going to have to be either knob or runs. We can do the same thing here and do our test. Uh, this word down here is going to have to contain a T or an R because those are the only possibilities for this column. We can put a line through knob. We have to leave Lent. Runs qualifies and Town also qualifies. Let's take a look at the board for a moment. Every once in a while when you're working something and you're filling in all of the words and that, it's a good idea to step back. So let's step back and take a look at that grid for just a moment. Does anything jump out to you? How about our center word, many? There it sits. We still have possible words on the diagonals. We don't have anything filled in alternately for the uh, vertical, and we have several words uh, filled in, but nothing firm on that uh, row going across. But here's something very interesting. We know that this row is A. We've already figured that out. We know that this diagonal is M, and we know that this diagonal is N. The only letter remaining that we haven't already used as one of our letters is Y. So we now know that the vertical is going to have to be Y. What else can we uh, figure out from looking at the grid? Let's take a look at this box and this word down on the end. Since we have ding here, are there any letters uh, that are shared between any of these words and this? M? No. There is an I, but there's no S or T down here. How about the word worm? There's no W, no O, no R, and no M. Worm can be eliminated from this box. We know that this is going to have to be missed. Pardon my penmanship. <laughs> uh, we now have missed there, um, and as with a lot of puzzles, the more words you get to fill in or the more boxes that you fill in on any puzzle, it gives you more information and figuring out the end of the puzzle starts to happen a little bit faster. We also know 
that since we put in the word missed here, that this particular row is going to have to be the letter I. It's the only letter shared between missed and ding, and we also have to make sure, I'm not always good about checking things off as I go through my puzzles, but we can check off the word missed down here as well. We still have uh, a lot of words, we've got at least four other words that can fit the uh, description here, but do we have a word that uses I and Y? If we do, we can fill in that square right there, I and Y. Ding, we've already used. Jibe does not have a Y. It does have an I, but no Y. Mist has been used, and mild has been used. We have rich. Rich does not have the letter. It has an I, but no Y. The final uh, I word is Wiley. Hey, Wiley has both an I and a Y. Wiley. We can fill that in as well. We only have three more words that use the letter Y. Uh, we can go ahead and fill in our mini list going down. We have not used Foxy. We've not used Lucy. And we've not used Yolk. Let's put that little mini list here. Let's see if we can eliminate any of these words going across here uh, by using the word mild. There's no M, I, L, or D in Foxy that we can eliminate. Uh, we do have an L here. How about yoke? There's no Y, O, oh, there is an L. So we can't get rid of that, but we can get rid of Foxy. Let's move over here and see if we've got something that's in common between all three of these boxes. There's an L, L, and L. Uh, so Lent is a possibility. R. There's no R in the middle. There is a U, uh, but there's no U down here. We've got an N here. We don't have an N here. We don't have an N here. Runs will not work. And Town. There's no T in this middle one here, that leaves only the word Lent that we can use in this box. And we can now also decide that L is going to be the letter for that row going across. That still allows us to use Lucy or Yolk. Let's check off Lent from our list. But we now know that this is going to be L going across. Let's go back and take a look at this word missed again. Early on in our analysis, we said that this column was going to have to be either T or R. Well, we filled in the word missed. There is no R in the word missed. We now know that this column is going to have to be T. Let's go down. We still have a T and an A. For raft and tack, we can't eliminate those yet. How many letters, uh, as far as columns, rows, and diagonals, how many have we placed? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there's only 12 of them that we're going to have to put in there. We still have four open spots. We know that this one's B or R, but what can we do to try to decide which one goes where? Let's start with this second row and do some analysis on each one of these words. Is there a commonly shared letter all the way across going here? B does not show up in that middle box. U certainly does. U, U, U. U is a possibility. Let's try, well, we already have M placed. We don't have P placed, but P is not one of our letters that shows up at least five times. So the only letter from the word bump that could be uh, going all the way across is the letter U. Let's do the same thing with the word worm. There's no W in that center box. We've got O all of the way across. We don't have an R in that middle box, and we don't have an M. So we know that this, this second row is going to have to be U or O. Let's do the same thing with the fourth row down here. 
Is there a K all the way across? Well, K is not one of our letters that shows up at least five times. We can eliminate that. We've used the letter N. How about O? Here, 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 and here. O is a possibility. Let's try the word runs. Is there an R? There is no R there in the center box. Is there a U? We've got U, 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 and U all the way across. U is a possibility. How about the letter S? Well, there's no S in the middle box either. We know that this row is O or U. We know that this row is also O or U. What's the only letter that we haven't, uh, we have not decided where B and R go? So, this is going to have to also be B or R. Can we eliminate one of those letters by checking it against the list here? We've got an R, R, and R. That certainly meets the criteria. We've got a B here, but we don't have a B in this center box. We have raft and tack, so it cannot possibly be the letter B. Let's make this R and go back here, and we now know that this is the letter B. That is a major breakthrough because now we can go down and eliminate some more words here. We can no longer use the word worm. That's going to have to be bump. And let's try to check that off there. As I look now, <laughs> I noticed that I did not ever check off the word Wiley when we eliminated it. Like I said, I'm not always good about doing that. Let's look down further. Uh, into this box, there is no B, obviously, in runs. This is going to have to be knob. And what is that? What's key about th those words bump and knob? Well, we said this has got to be O or U. There's no U here. We know that this is O. And this is going to have to be U. We now have all 12 letters placed, Always, all that's left to do here <clears throat> is to do cross-reference. We need an I word that also contains the letter B that we've not already used. We've got blow. That uh, will not work. We've used bump. We've used the word grab. And we've got one more B word in here somewhere. Where am I missing it? Jibe. Jibe has both I and B. Sometimes it takes just a little bit of searching. We've got one more word for this one. It's going to have to share both an I and an R. Let's check off Jibe and let's see what word we can find that's got an R and an I. Ding does not. Jibe we've already used. Mild and mist have been used. We've got the word rich. Are there any others that use R and I? That looks like the only one. Let's put rich in here and check it off. Well, we know that this column is definitely R now, which means we can eliminate knob, lent, and town. This is going to have to be runs. This is going to have to be raft. And this word is going to have to be worm. Going across. Let's check those words off. Rich, we've checked off. Runs, we can now check off. Raft, we can now check off and worm we can check off. All right, we need one more R word down here. Uh, let's see what we have left. Uh, it looks like we've used all of the other R words. I think the only one that's left is furl. Going across here, we now know that this is you that eliminates foxy and yoke. This has to be Lucy. And the end word's got to have to be duck. I'm trying to see if there are any words that we can eliminate from our lists. We can eliminate duck. This has got to be pods. And we 
should check off pods. We need a word here that's got a T and a U. Thug certainly fits the bill. It looks like our only choice. Let's put thug. And check it off. We only have a few words left. We need a word here that has both a T and an O. Town. Looks like our only choice there. We need a word here that's got both a B and an L. Let's check off town. Blow is our only word we can put in down here. We can eliminate Lucy from the middle. Lucy we've already used up above. This has got to be yoke. And this then has to be foxy. We've used raft over here. This has got to be tack. Once you get the letters placed, it's a matter of cross-referencing and process of elimination. But there you have it. Uh, it's very, there's a lot of analysis involved with this puzzle, but once you get going with it, I think that the logic kind of speaks for itself. And it's a lot of fun. It's a little bit of work, but when you finish a puzzle like this, it's extremely satisfying, and we've managed to complete the bingo puzzle. I'll be back with some final thoughts from the desk of the puzzle detective right after this. If you enjoy solving puzzles, you'll find the best selection to challenge your mind at PennyDellPuzzles.com. Whether you're looking for variety collections or entire books devoted to your favorite type of puzzle, you'll find it there with tremendous values on puzzle magazine packages, including print and solve puzzles that you can download and solve immediately. And as a thank you to viewers, you can find an exclusive offer by going to PennyDellPuzzles.com slash The Puzzle Detective. Well, I hope you enjoyed solving that puzzle. Don't miss any of my case files. Subscribe to my YouTube channel now, and I hope that you'll leave me a comment. If you'd like to learn more about The Puzzle Detective, go to my website at thepuzzledetective.com. There you can also help support future videos by linking to my Patreon page. And until next time, keep your pencils sharp and your mind sharper.